Welcome. In this session, you'll learn how CodeBuilder can be useful for admins and others on the team. Before we dive in, just a quick reminder that Salesforce is a publicly traded company and all purchasing decisions should be made based on generally available products. In this session, we're going to talk about a new tool at your disposal when building and working on the Salesforce platform, and that's CodeBuilder. CodeBuilder brings a Salesforce optimized development environment to the browser. It's built on AWS as a part of our partnership and includes point and click tools like SQL Builder and support for all Salesforce languages and frameworks. Now you may be thinking, wait a minute, this is supposed to be a session for admins and I'm already talking about development. As an admin, you cover a lot of ground and sometimes a quote unquote developer tool is the most efficient way to get things done. CodeBuilder brings you a development environment right in the browser, already set up and optimized for Salesforce work. You don't have to install anything locally. Just a quick one-time setup in your org and you're ready to dive in. This makes it easy to use when needed without spending a lot of time setting things up in order to get started. Within CodeBuilder, you can access the same Salesforce extensions and CLI that users can install locally. So whether you're working on your desktop or in the browser, you can access the same tools. Those tools include productivity features like code completion and refactoring, along with point and click interfaces to access code or write SQL queries. Before we dive into a demo, let's orient ourselves on how CodeBuilder relates to your org. CodeBuilder is brought to you through a managed package that you add to your org. As the admin, you adjust permissions to decide which users get access to this tool. From CodeBuilder, those users can work with orgs or sandboxes based on their permissions. For example, if a user doesn't have access to a full copy sandbox, they cannot connect to that org from CodeBuilder. CodeBuilder can be easily connected to any org or sandbox environment you need to work against. You can authenticate to multiple orgs and easily switch between them. If you are new to CodeBuilder, you can just connect to a personal sandbox and start trying it out. Okay, enough of slides, let's check it out. Here I am in CodeBuilder, and let's start with having a look around. On the left, you see icons that let you access different views and tools. Next, you'll see a sidebar that will vary depending on which icon you clicked. In the center is where all the action will be. This is where you can edit files, build SQL queries, and lots of other things. On the bottom, you can see what org you're currently connected to. This could be a sandbox, scratch org, production org, or even a trailhead playground org. To connect an org, you can just click on the org nickname. This walks you through the steps to log in and authorize the connection to that org, including choosing the nickname, also known as an alias. Once you authorize an org, you can switch back to it with just a click. For today's demo, let me select the org I want, and now we're set to go. So that was a really quick orientation for those that are new to this tool. Now let's see what we can do. I have a new requirement to add an indication on whether a product is available when users are looking at some product details. This would let the users see that availability right when they're looking at that info and that's something that they want top and center. So let's start with checking out the data. I'm familiar with this app and I know it's the product object I wanna work with, but I'm not too sure of the fields. Let's open another awesome tool here in CodeBuilder called SQL Builder. With SQL Builder, I can build a SQL query with clicks and see the results right here in Code Builder. I can open it by just typing SQL in the command palette. This is a great tool to quickly check out data, whether that's a part of making a change or troubleshooting report oddities that users have flagged. Let's select the product custom object and some fields. Grab name, status, let's grab category. And as I select the pieces of my query, SQL Builder shows me the query it's building behind the scenes. This file can be saved for future use and run in the future whenever you need it. 
You can also learn more about how SQL is written by seeing the query as you use the dropdowns to create it. Let's run this query and see the data. And perfect, I see that this field is the info that the business is asking for. Once I run a query, I can also export the data. This can be super helpful for deeper analysis or data cleansing when needed. If you ever need to create more sophisticated queries, we also have rich code completion for SQL. I can flip from the visual builder to the query file anytime with this little icon. Even starting by finding your fields that you need in the builder and then toggling over to the SQL file to add more complex joins and logic can save you a lot of time. I can just start typing and I'll get help to construct what I need. Okay, now we know the object and field that I need. Let's look at the page and dive into the LWC. So I'll be working with the eBikes project. eBikes is a fictitious electric bicycle manufacturer. It manages its products and reseller orders through this Lightning application. Here's one of the pages within the app called Product Explorer. It's what allows the users to browse the products and see all the details. When a user clicks on a product, they can see the detailed view. This is the view where the change is requested to show that status information at the top. In Code Builder, let's grab the right metadata to make this change. To do that, I'll click on the Salesforce icon on the left to bring up the org browser. The org browser lets me see the metadata in the org I'm connected to. Here, I can browse what's available and grab files to work with. I know this is a Lightning Web component, so let's check those out. From the list, product card seems like the one I want. With one click, I'm right in the code. Behind the scenes, that click is doing a retrieve and saving a copy of that file from the org into your code builder environment so you can work on it. In the Explorer view, I can see the files added to my code builder environment. For this change, I have multiple files because a Lightning Web component is made up of a few different pieces. Let's start with the JavaScript, which does the heavy lifting, like getting the data we need. Okay, checking out the code, I can see at the top that it's getting some fields from the product object. I can follow this pattern to add the new status field that's been requested. Looking at the rest of the file, I can see that I need to expose this status field to make it available to use on the page. I'll add a line for this new field that's like the others. And with that, the heavy lifting of getting the data is done. Now I need to make the field available on the page. For that, let's flip over to the HTML. Looking through this code, I can see some of the fields and that electric component section label that I saw on the page. The requirement from the business is to show the status at the top above the category information. And I see the category information here. Now I know where to add my status field. Once again, I can follow the pattern to add this new field. And with a copy and paste and a slight tweak, I can add this field, even if I'm not that familiar with HTML. Okay, I think that's got it. Now this change is complete, but it's only in my code builder environment. Let's deploy that code to my org so that I can test it. I can do that with just a right click. With that, the files I was working on are copied to the org through that deploy command. Now let's check out my change in the org. Let's refresh and then pick a product. Awesome, now I see the new status field at the top of the view. Now I have this change ready for review so I could deploy it to a sandbox for others to review and test. You could do that by connecting to that sandbox and executing the same deploy again, or you could use the CLI or source control according to your team's process. For example, if you're working with DevOps Center, you would check this change under the same source control project you set up there, so DevOps Center is aware of your change and it can be moved through the process. No matter what your team's process, you have access to all the tools you need right here in Code Builder. 
You've just seen how easy it is to use Code Builder to connect orgs and sandboxes, build and execute SQL queries, and even make a quick change using code. Not to worry if you didn't take notes during this session, Code Builder has resources and interactive tutorials included to guide you. You can access those resources anytime from the welcome page or by clicking on the little Salesforce question mark icon and bringing up the resource panel. I can use the interactive tutorials to get guidance on common tasks. For example, if you want to build a SQL query but don't remember how to open SQL Builder, these walkthroughs will guide you step by step. That was a short demo of just a few things you can do with Code Builder. Everything I showed you is available today in the Salesforce extensions for VS Code on desktop and is available in Code Builder Beta. It's the same experience no matter which way you choose to access it. If there's something new for Code Builder, like SQL Builder enhancements, you'll see those on desktop too, and vice versa. Whether you're a dev who lives in code all day, every day, or you're an admin who prefers clicks, Code Builder can help you save time and be more efficient. We're currently in beta and we'd love to hear your feedback. This is an open beta, meaning that anyone can participate and you don't have to go through a nomination process. To get started, use this QR code to search for our Trailblazer community group or search directly in the groups for the one called Code Builder. There, you'll find all the resources you need to dive in and try it out. We're eager for more of your feedback, so please check it out and let us know what you think. Thank you so much for your time and for tuning in. Happy building!